years, even before the current ownership of Studio Designer, um, I was able to consult with the original owner and creator of Studio Designer, which was formerly Studio Webwear, and even prior to that, Studio Desktop, okay? For those of you that are super old school. Um, I've been a certified consultant for this company for over a decade. I know their software in and out, best practices, and I'm actually on most of the really early on tutorials, okay? In these next series of videos, I basically give you all the tools that you need to successfully own, operate, and manage your interior design or architect firm, okay? I include step-by-step -step processes for just about everything from setting up a brand new studio designer account, um, the process for project management and what that looks like, and the best practices for accounting and maintaining the books that we've set up. So now that we have posted client payment and we are getting ready to create the POs for the items that are approved at this time, and you can pretty much clearly see what that, those are because there is a client payment posted to these items. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in the case of um, these items that have payment on them is I'm going to just go ahead and um, create the POs for these items so we can get them to the vendor. Okay, and how I would do that is I clearly just marked the, the items that had the client payment to them and I will create order. Okay, you'll see that each of these have their own um, PO associated with them and you can see what that looks like. Okay, and if I wanted to change the view on this, I can by changing it to show this way. And all this does is give you the brief description. It kind of gives you the overview. And you can see which ones have the POs, okay? If we had um, the vendors set up in the system, we could even send the POs to the vendors in this fashion as well, okay? It's gonna be just the same as sending the proposal to the client. And um, what that looks like is I would just share this PDF of the PO, and I, I do want to make sure that you can see what that looks like. It basically shows all the details that the vendor needs in order to uh, understand what it is that we're ordering from them. Okay, and in some cases where you might have an online account, um, this is not going to be the way that you send them, obviously. Um, this is just um, the generic way for me to show you how to create the POs. I'm not going to um, dive into sending things um, in the system just yet. So now that we've created the POs, you will want to go to projects, purchase orders, and that will take you to this screen. If we had many items set up, you can um, filter by vendor, you can search for specific verbiage, you can pull it up by the client or obviously the, the order number or a date range. Okay. Um, now, none of these have been emailed in the system. Otherwise, um, it would indicate that information right here. Okay, and in this case, because these are going to be paid as different um, postings, um, that will allow me to show you the different ways that we can post vendor payment. Okay, um, in the case where we might go online and just go ahead and place the order online, um, that is one that we probably wouldn't send from the system because we would just log into our Neiman Marcus account and go ahead and process the payment. Okay, I can post the payment made via our you know, credit card, checking account, or debit card, whichever um, that falls in line with. And in the case of this item, I am going to go ahead and post the payment that was made via credit card, okay? And we can do that a number of ways. I'm gonna show you how to post it from here. So from this screen, I'm gonna just open the PO, and I'm gonna go over here to payment, and you're gonna see that it is defaulting to the full amount, okay? That default is based on the item setup. 
Now, if I were to go in here and change this for whatever reason, let's just say that um, they only wanted a 50% deposit, you can clearly see that it changes the default. Okay. I don't know that I um, broke it out that way previously, but um, that is what this assertion um, entails. Okay. It is just the determining factor of what the defaults are. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. So you can see it didn't change it. It would have if I would have changed it to 50%. Now, because I know that we're paying this with our Visa credit card and there is only one credit card associated with this account, I am going to go ahead and post it. Now, um, you can do your naming convention a number of different ways. I'm going to teach you the way that I teach it when I teach these classes to other accountants. And there is a reason why I do everything that I do. So I, I want you to um, keep that in mind when you're um, making notes on how you want to uh, set up your processes. And in this case, I am going to go ahead and put Visa. And I'll explain why in, um, in the next steps. Okay, so um, you can clearly see that I'm choosing to use the visa. If we had Amex, I might change that to Amex. Um, if we had cut a check and printed that out, I would that would have been um, the default check number that would have been used. Now, if you see a date range that is just um, 010422, that would tell me that was a debit card posted. So there is a reason why we do that, and I'm going to show you what that looks like um, in just a moment. Okay, so we said that we were going to go ahead and post it as Visa, right? And I'll show you why. So I'm going to go ahead and post that. It's going to ask you to confirm. I'm going to say yes. And the reason why I care so much about um, using the naming conventions as I explained is because unlike um, Unlike most uh, other softwares, particularly QuickBooks, um, you're not able to drill down on certain um, payments. And what that means to you is, if I were to pull up this item and kind of review it and open this for payments, you would be able to see without the ability to drill down that this was paid with the visa. Right. If if I had not put that or did not have these naming conventions established the way I do, we we would not know what the paying account was. Okay. And the only way to pull the paying account would be to uh, go into the general ledger and um, you can see that. Uh, let's see. We could do. Um, I wanted to isolate this. You can clearly see that this is going to show both sides. Of that okay and you're, you're going to see that it is creating a visa payment from the visa uh, account and you can see that the offset of that is vendor deposit okay you will hear me reiterate the fact that studio will not recognize income or expense until we invoice the client right I say that and I repeat that so many times in a day and I want to make sure that um, I, I specify that here as well in these videos, okay? Um, and I will, I will explain and go into detail in uh, future videos um, in regards to vendor deposits and all that, okay? But I just wanted you to be able to see why I have the naming conventions the way that I do, okay? The other um, great thing about this is if I were to post this in the wrong account for whatever reason, um, the fact that it says Visa usually is my cue to myself that um, I paid it from the Visa. Okay. So if I saw that sitting in the checking account, I might question it. Okay. Now that I've showed you how to post a payment from the PO screen here for this top one, I'm going to go ahead and show you an alternate way to post payments in the event that you needed to do a check in or cut a check to your vendor as opposed to uh, posting a payment to the credit card uh, account. Okay. 
So how we would do that is go into accounting under money out. Um, if we wanted to have other accounts, they would be listed here, but in this case, I only have one checking account. So um, if we were to do a regular office payment, office payments are primarily overhead items or overhead types of payments. What that means would be um, payments that you would make to vendors that are for uh, overhead type costs, meaning they're not related to a project. So there is no PO for the item, things like that. It would be like your cell phone bill, um, payment to the credit card, things like that. Okay. But instead, we're going to go ahead and go to order payments. I'm going to go ahead and select the client. And if we wanted to go ahead, I think we said John Richard was the client or the vendor that we wanted to pay. Okay, and when I do that, you can see that it clearly um, shows the amount that we're going to uh, pay here. You can see that the payment code is print. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead. If if it was a partial payment, meaning like if we had 50 percent, I could click this and it would default to whatever we. We set up as the default, but in this case, it is 100%, so it is the same regardless. Okay, and what I'm going to do is create check entries. Okay, and what that does is you can now see when we look at this, there's a pending payment right here for 1300. Okay, it still shows a balance because we have not posted the payment. So once you're done going ahead and setting up any additional vendor payments that you want to include in this check run, um, you can um, get out of here and you will see that there's a red text here that says print checks. Okay. And what that's going to be is um, depending on what my check number was. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and um, enter my next check number, which is um, 0122. Okay, and um, what this what this does is it's giving the next check number to you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and print checks, and um, you're going to want to pre-establish which check form you're using. Okay, I know that this is kind of a pain, so I usually do this for my uh, clients or people that I work with. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just use. Um, um, one of these check formats, and I can show you what that looks like. So I chose check format 25, and you can um, look at the format of that um, specific um, template. And when, when we pull it up, you can see that there are two subs, right? One is um, for us, and one is for the vendor to accompany with the check, okay? Um, I didn't put an address, so I would definitely need to update that before going ahead and mailing this check. Okay. If that um, specific check type did not work for you, you can change it. We can look at what that looks like there. And so this is, you know, kind of a standard check template. Again, you're seeing that there is no mailing address again, but it does change the formatting of the check. Uh, a template now as the check um, being on top and the two subs on the um, lower half. Okay, so I'm going to just assume that that is okay and I'm going to close that. And um, now I would print that or save it to PDF. Okay, I usually save it to PDF so I can tweak it if I need to, but um, we're going to just go ahead and leave that. Okay. And you can see that it now has the next check number defaulting, but the, the check is still here. So if I made a mistake and wanted to reprint that or, you know, now update it to have the um, vendor address, I can go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to just pick out um, um, and um, I'm just going to um, put this in as such and run for, okay. So I'm going to just go ahead and um, save this. 
And now what we can see is if we wanted to change anything or, or now go ahead and print this, um, we can. Okay, if I wanted to reprint it, let's just say I, I wanted to change the um, numbering. So you can see that it took the check number that we used, but if I wanted to go ahead and reprint it, I would just go like that. Okay, and I can just save and close. And then now you'll be able to see that it is red again and it's asking me to reprint the check. Now, assuming I didn't ruin the check 1C2, I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that and it's going to use the same check number. So that's how I would go ahead and print this. So I'm going to select print check. If you know the template, I would definitely use that. Um, I can't remember which one we used. Um, but we can preview it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to just use this one. Okay. And you can see what that looks like. I would print it or save it. Whichever you want to do. For me, I do usually keep this in my um, files along with whatever backup or PO or anything else you wanted to save. Okay. Okay. And now that um, we've cut the check and we're okay with it, I'm going to go ahead and post it. Okay. Remember that this is not posted or recognized until we click post printed. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you will now see that the purchase order does show that it's paid. Okay. And again, I'm going back to the original project details and I want to show you um, what that looks like. So if I were to isolate just this, you can see now that our client paid us and we've paid the vendor in full. Okay. And um, I want to make for certain that um, when looking at this, that I go ahead and um, explain what this, what this, these payments um, have posted towards. Okay, it's a lot easier to explain when there's not a lot of things in the system, like like we have here, and what that looks like for us. And I'll just go ahead and show you. I'm going to pull up our balance sheet, okay, and I'm going to just say don't include the zeros and I am going to leave the sub accounts on. Okay, and I want to kind of just show you what our total um, account looks like. Okay, so we have collected money from our client. Um, and you can see that the payments that we made to our vendors are sitting here in vendor deposit. Okay, and that is the amount that we've paid to our vendors, whether it was from our Chase Visa or from our checking account. It is sitting in there as a vendor deposit. Now, the money that our client paid to us, which is $8,495.55 um, for the retainer and for um, the proposal uh, deposit payments. Okay. As you can see, when you look at this balance sheet, it does not have any profit. Okay. I want to make sure that I show you what I mean by that. Because this uh, piggybacks on my reiterating over and over that studio does not recognize income or expense until we invoice the client. So as you can see here, if I were to pull up this P&L or income statement, it is not registering any income or expense, even though the client has paid us and even though we've paid our vendor. Okay. Why that's so is because um, when we invoice something, that means it's final, it's due. When we say due, meaning that the client owes that balance in full, you know, ASAP. Okay. And um, I just want to make for sure that you understand what that looks like. So now that we've posted payments to the vendors from the POs, Okay, the next thing I want to show you is to go back to the project item screen. Now, one of the things that I typically like to teach everybody early on is the views. Okay, views are just depending on how you want to look at things or um, what you typically are searching for whenever you're doing your um, daily duties. Whatever that looks like for you is going to be, you know, dependent on 
how you want your view to look. Okay, I'm just showing you a number of different views that are available. Okay, what these views are is the ability to display things on the project based on what you're looking for. Now, again, I just want to make sure that you understand that the information that is able to be called up is contingent on the information that you feed into the system. So if I did not put any of these dates in, those dates would be blank. Okay? And it's super easy to do um, when, when setting up items, and I'll go back to my original screen, okay? Um, when you're setting up items, I, I just go into here, and I like to show you that if you go under codes, you can clearly just put in dates, okay? And if you're on the right date, it will just default to today's date. So if I needed to put CFA approved, that's for cutting for approval. Um, order acknowledgement, estimated ship date, or any other information that's here, you know, we, we would put that information as ourselves, okay? So you can see it, you can just change that date to whatever you wanted it to be. Okay. I'm gonna delete that and um, hit my close. So um, that's one of the things I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of is the ability to look at different views. Okay, and making sure that you understand that um, depending on what it is you're looking for, if you look at dates and you don't put in dates, there's not going to be anything there. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is just the different views for the project.